Uh, hello, dear students. Uh, in the following um, 10 to 15 minutes, I will try to provide um, full derivation for the um, Markov chain as well as the uh, equilibrium um, equations and the um, normalization equation and how uh, they can be solved for the mm slash m as m goes to infinity the example that we looked at in the lecture as a previous exam so the idea is um, we are looking for the analysis of m m with multiple servers as the number of servers goes to infinity and as we agreed if the buffer size is not mentioned which is the case in this um, q then it's an infinite buffer size so our q is a q model is an infinite q which has an arrival rate lambda and it has an infinite number of servers so one server two servers three servers and this continues up to infinity right so the number of servers goes all the way to so m the number of servers goes to infinity now it must be noticed that the um to determine so to determine okay um the maximum number of packets um, that can be stored in the system right um, we check the buffer size and the number of servers right so in this case generally speaking the maximum number of packets that can be in the system is equal to the buffer size plus the number of servers right so this is the buffer size the number of servers now in this case both of them goes to infinity so we are sure that um, the system that we are checking here is uh, a system that has infinite capacity in terms of the number of packets that can exist into the system why this is important because this uh, number of packets the maximum number of packets that can be stored in the system defines this number defines right the number of states of the markov chain right so basically um the markov chain states for any queuing system as we mentioned before is um simply the um the different states represents how many packets exist inside the whole system right and again always to understand what we are saying here refer always to the example of the bank so when you go inside the bank and the queues and the um, uh, tellers or the number of customer service counters that exist there uh, the total number inside the banking system in that case is going to be the number of people standing in the queues plus the number of people standing at the counters which are the servers in that case so the sum of all of those is the total number of customers inside the system if you go to data networks it becomes the number of packets packets in the data system or data communication system is similar to customers in regular queuing system so anyways uh, now we understand that uh, because we have infinite number of servers and because we have infinite buffer so in general the system that we have here the queuing system that we have here um, can accommodate up to infinite number of packets this means that if we do the uh, uh, markov chain for this 
start with state 0, which means no packets inside the system, state 1, which means there is one packet inside the system, state 2, two packets inside the system, state 3, and you go up, the general case is going to be state n minus 1, going to state n, going to state n plus 1, and this continues up to infinity, right? So this system is uh, can go all the way to infinity. And now, um, if I am at state 0, this means simply, so if I'm at state 0, this means simply that I have no packets inside my system, and in that case, if a packet arrives, and the packet arrival is uh, with rate lambda, so the probability of a packet arrival is lambda delta t, then if a packet arrives to my queuing system, again a reminder, this is my queuing system, right? So only one arrival can happen, only one arrival rate, which is lambda, but I have multiple servers, so I have to accommodate that as we'll see later, right? So, okay. Uh, and each one of those servers is with a service rate mu, right? So, um, again, if I'm in state one to move to state two, an arrival has to happen. So lambda delta t. If I'm in state two to move to state three, it's lambda delta t. And the same thing continues all the way. So lambda delta t is always a single arrival that moves me to the next state because one more packet um, is coming into the system. So I am at state uh, n, uh, a packet arrives, so I move to state n plus 1. So the number of packets used to be n, packet arrives, it becomes n plus 1, so I move to this state, and the probability of transition is equal to the rate of arrival multiplied by delta t. So that's the probability because we have only one possibility of arrival, as I mentioned, right? Now, let's look at the other option. So if I am at state 1, um, so this means that if I'm in state 1, it means that I have one packet inside the system. There are two things that can happen in that case. A packet can arrive, so in that case I move to state 2, or a packet leaves the system, so I go back to state 0. Now, if you look at packet leaving the system, if I am at state 1, it means that only one server is occupied in this case, right? So the only possibility that a packet leaves the system is that this guy gets serviced and goes out. So this guy on the, at the counter, going back to the banking example, finishes what he has to do and he leaves the bank, right? That's the only possibility. Now, all the other servers, nothing can happen because there, is, there are no customers, actually. There are no packets in those servers. So the only possibility to move from state 1 to state 0 is that um, the existing customer is served. And the service rate is mu, so the probability is the rate multiplied by delta t as usual. Now, let's look at the case if I am at um, state 2, right? So if I am at state 2, this means that I have two customers inside the system. Right? If I am in this state, so the number of packets inside the system is 2. And as we mentioned, since we have infinite number of servers, all the packets will exist at servers. All the customers will be standing at counters, right? So these are the two packets that we have in the system. And the possibility that one leaves is either that this one leaves or this one leaves. Remember, in probability, when we have some event or another event, the total probability of those two events together is the sum. So either this customer leaves the system or this second packet or customer leaves the system. So it's mu delta t plus mu delta t, which gives us 2 mu delta t, right? What if we have three? So if we have three customers inside this system, it means that, or three packets, it means that they exist at three different servers, right? And then the probability that um, um, one of them leaves is that the white one leaves, or the red one leaves, or the blue one leaves. So now I have, in this case, three mu 
the T and so on. So it becomes that if I come from here, it's N mu delta T. And if I'm coming from here, it's N plus 1 mu delta T. And life goes on. So that's how it is. So now I have the queuing system complete with all the transition probabilities listed. What remains is what are the probabilities of the states. So this is P of 0. This has a probability P of 1. This has a probability P of 2. This has a probability P of 3. Just marking the states with probabilities. So P of N minus 1. P of N P of n plus 1. These are simply the probabilities of being in any one of those states, right? So the probability of being in state 1 is P of 1. probability of being in state n is P of n, and so on. Just marking them as numbers, as variables, to indicate the probabilities. Now, the equilibrium equations uh, for this system, there are two cases. There is the case of being at state n in general, where you will have four arrows, two getting in, two going out. And the only exception or the only difference is when you are at state zero where you have only one going out, one going on. So we have to write the equations at those two cases. So for n equals zero, we have the probability of exiting from state zero. That's the probability of being at zero multiplied by the probability of leaving zero going to one. So lambda delta t, this is equal to the probability of entering into uh, zero. So this one, which means coming from one. So p of one multiplied by this transition. So it's p of one multiplied by mu delta t, right? Which is going to lead to um, p of one is equal to, okay, um, lambda over mu p of 0, right? So that's one equation. And let me mark this as equation number 1. Now at general n, so n greater than or equal to 1, you can get the general expression by looking at the generalized case. So here there are two entering two exiting from the state. So we write the equations for those two entering and two exiting. So P of N minus one multiplied by lambda delta T. That's uh, this guy entering. And then the other entering one is this one. So we add it. So that's plus P of N plus one multiplied by Transition, in that case, which is n plus 1 mu delta t. Now, these are the two entering states. The two exiting states uh, are those guys. And the sum of those exiting should be equal to the sum of those entering. So, it must be that this is equal to, let's do the exiting. So, that's P of n multiplied by lambda delta t plus P of N multiplied by N mu delta T, right? And again, simplify this equation so you can get rid of these delta T guys. They just, and it becomes uh, that the general equation is lambda P of N minus 1 plus mu times uh, plus n plus 1 mu times p of n plus 1. This is equal to lambda p of n plus n mu p of n, right? So that's another the generalized case for the case that um, uh, any general n or n greater than or equal to 1, right? So for any state except state 0, uh, just plug in the value of n and you get an equation that relates 
the probability of n, probability of n plus 1, and the probability of n minus 1, right? Uh, and then the, these are the equilibrium equations. So this is equation number 2. And these both are equilibrium equation, right? So at equilibrium, we have those two cases. And then the normalization equation says uh, that the summation of all the probabilities of all the states from n equals 0 up to infinity, number of states is equal to infinity, we can go all the way to n equals infinity, this summation is equal to 1, right? The sum of all the probabilities, these states are all the possible cases of the random system, so the sum of all the probabilities of these should be equal to 1. That's the normalization equation. Now, in order to solve this system, um, we need to simplify the equilibrium equations first, and then we plug them into the normalization equation such that uh, eventually we can get an expression for uh, P of n as a function of um, the system parameters. Uh, in order to do that, let's, um, let's first of all look at equation 2. So equation uh, 2, right, for n equals um, 1 will give us lambda p of 0 plus 2 mu p of 2 is equal to um, lambda p of 1 plus mu p of 1 Right now, if I substitute, so this is equation number three, and I say sub one in three. So substitute equation one in equation three. I can easily find out that what I will get is going to be lambda p of 0 plus 2 mu p of 2 is equal to, we'll remove p of 1 and we substitute that by lambda over mu p of 0. That's what we have in equation 1. So that's going to be lambda times lambda over mu p of 0 plus mu times lambda over mu we have zero. I notice that um, this guy, this cancels with this. We end up with lambda p of zero, but we have another lambda p of zero here, so this also cancels with this guy. And very nice result here. If we rearrange things, we can say that p of two is equal to, now we have Lambda times lambda divided by mu divided by the other mu. So that's lambda square over mu square. So lambda over mu all squared multiplied by P of zero. And then this two, when it goes to the other side, it becomes a half. So that's basically another nice equation. Uh, let's call it number four. This equation that P of two can be directly deduced from P of 0. And if we continue to go back to equation um, number 2, uh, right, and so equation number 2, and then we plug, instead of n equals 1, we plug there n equals 2. So we'll have lambda P of 1, and then here we will have p of 3, and then here we will have p of 2. And then we can substitute p of 2 and p of 1 from equations 1 and 4. Both p of 2 and p of 1 can be expressed as functions of p of 0, and this will allow us eventually from what we got from this one for n equals 2 to represent 
p of 3 as a function of p of 0. So we'll find out that what we will reach is p of 3 is equal to 1 over 2 times 1 over 3 times lambda over mu to the power 3 p of 0. And that's equation number 5, right? Now, we can notice that we have kind of a pattern. So p of n is equal to 1 over uh, 1 times 2 times 3, so p of 3. One p of 4 is going to be 1 over 2 times 3 times 4. And then it's lambda over mu to the power of n. And then p of 0. So the general expression is going to be that p of n is equal to 1 over factorial n multiplied by lambda over mu to the power n multiplied by p of 0. Now, this is a nice equation. I'll call this equation number 5. And then we have the normalization equation that says summation of p of n from n equals 0 up to infinity is equal to 1. That's equation number 6. That's the normalization that we had already in the previous slide. Solving those two together, we can get an expression for p of 0. So simply take this guy, substitute it here, right? And this is going to give you what? Summation from n equals 0 up to infinity, 1 over the factorial of n, lambda over mu to the power n, p of 0. This whole thing is equal to 1. This means that, right? Now, notice that the p of 0 can be taken outside the summation because it doesn't depend on n. So we have p of 0 multiplied by the summation from n equals 0 to infinity, 1 over the factorial of n, lambda over mu to the power n, and this whole thing is equal to 1. Now, this is a very famous summation. Uh, the summation that this resembles says that e to the power x, the exponential to the power x, is equal to the summation from n equals 0 to infinity, 1 over factorial n, right? x to the power n. So this looks like the summation that we have on the other side, right? The only difference is that x in this case is lambda over mu, right? So we notice that the x here is in the place of the lambda over mu. So we can say that this guy simply is e to the power, this is in place of x, so this is e to the power lambda over mu, right? right? And then p of 0 is equal e to the power lambda over mu, and this is equal to 1, so we can deduce that p of 0, in fact, is equal to e to the minus lambda over mu. So now we have an expression for p of 0, and since we have this expression, we can substitute it back in equation number 5 to get an expression for p of n. So the result that we reach is that p of n is equal to 1 over factorial n, right? Lambda over mu to the power n, and then p of 0 is e to the minus lambda over mu. Now this is the general expression of the state probabilities, right? And we notice also that this is exactly the expression of the Poisson distribution. That's just an observation for the case of infinite number of servers. So it's uh, the state distributions is a Poisson distribution, right? It's uh, It follows a Poisson distribution. That's a special case. That's just the case of when m number of servers goes to infinity. Um, if this is p of m, and um, now... That's generally the objective of analyzing uh, a queue. You want so the queue analysis or the solution for uh, for the Markov chain is simply what we reached in the previous equation is simply finding right the probability of the states as 
a function of system params, parameters, right? And these system parameters are the arrival rate, service rate, and which state I am in. That's the only um, variables uh, that can. Actually, also, it can be in general as a function of M, but in this case, it's not a function of M. So it can be also a function of the number of servers. These are the system params. So we find now the probability of any uh, state, the probability of having any number of packets inside the system as a function of the system parameters. So once I know the parameters, I can find that probability. But to analyze this system, as we said, we need to find, for example, the average Q length. And L, the average Q length, is equal to the summation of the size of the queue. Now, N is the size of the queue, the state number. So zero, state zero means that the queue has only um, the size of the queue, I mean the whole system, the whole queuing system, right? So N equals zero means that the whole system has zero packets. N equals one means that the whole system has one packet. And so on. if I want to get the average number of packets, then I take the packet number, multiply it by the probability of that number, and I sum over all possible cases, and this means from n equals 0 up to infinity. So this is going to be the summation of n multiplied by, remember, what was our p of n? It was the um, 1 over factorial n multiplied by um, e to the power lambda over mu multiplied by lambda over mu to the power n, right? So this is going to be n over factorial n e to the lambda over mu, right? Multiplied by lambda over mu to the power n. And this is simply, and that's summation from n equals 0 to infinity. I don't really need to evaluate this summation because as we noticed, the probability density function is Poisson. And for general, for the Poisson, this is actually the average. So basically, the average Q length is equal to simply lambda over mu, right? Now, if you want to get the average waiting time inside the system, it's equal to from Little's formula, right? Um, Little says that the average length is equal to the arrival rate uh, multiplied by the average waiting time. So the average waiting time is going to be equal to the length divided by, right, divided by the arrival rate, lambda. So this becomes simply 1 over mu, which is uh, something we expected from the beginning. Remember that we said because this is an infinite um, number of servers, then on the average, each uh, user, each packet is going to take uh, 1 over mu, which is its service time. That's the only time it will spend inside the queue. And that's the total delay that a total array that a packet spends inside the queue. I hope uh, showing you this analysis on a, on a, on a video is going to make it easier for you to understand how to work out these uh, analyses. Um, and I wish you uh, all the best in your uh, exam tomorrow. Thank you.